Hello and welcome to AP Chemistry Review Topic 2.4 Structure of Metals and Alloys. Metals have a very specific type of bonding called metallic bonding. In metallic bonding, electrons are free to move from atom to atom in the metal structure. Uh, these electrons are located in the valence shell of each of the atoms, but they aren't localized on any particular atom. And so we say that the electrons are delocalized. They can move from one atom's d orbitals to another atom's d orbitals freely. And this free movement of electrons randomly from atom to atom is called the metallic bond. We often call these free moving electrons a sea of electrons because they're able to flow from one place to another. This flow of electrons uh, is what gives rise to metal's unique properties. One of those unique properties is the ability to conduct electricity. Because the electrons can move from atom to atom, if we place an electric field around the metal, then the electrons will flow from the negative side of that electrical field towards the positive side of that electrical field. And so the movement of charge is what we define as electricity. And so metals conduct electricity because charges can flow in one direction from one side to another in an electrical field. Metals also conduct heat very well. Because the atoms are not um, located in a specific position or don't have to be located in a specific position within a met metallic solid, uh, they can vibrate more easily. And the freedom of the electrons from moving between the atoms allows for the vibration of the atoms more easily. And vibrational energy is heat energy. Also, metals are malleable and ductile. Malleable means that if you hit them with a, a hard force, that they will flatten out. And so in this animation, you can see that the atoms, because they're not, don't have to be specifically in one location in order to share electrons with neighboring atoms, when you hit a metal, those atoms will spread out uh, and still be able to share their electrons with neighboring atoms. So uh, metals are malleable. Metals are also ductile, which means that you can pull on them and the atoms will stretch out into a thin wire. Uh, so this has to do with the sea of electrons being able to be shared between neighboring atoms, regardless of the location of those atoms. Alloys are mixtures of elements where the primary component is a metal. Uh, there's two different types of alloys we're going to look at, substitutional alloys and interstitial alloys. In a substitutional alloy, one atom, uh, an atom of one metal is substituted with atoms of another metal that are a similar size. Examples of this are brass and bronze. In brass, copper and zinc atoms are mixed together and the zinc replaces uh, some of the copper atoms in the crystal structure. And this gives, of course, the unique properties that brass has. So it doesn't look like copper, it doesn't look like zinc, it has unique properties all on its own by substituting in the zinc into the copper matrix. Bronze is another example of a substitutional alloy where tin atoms are substituted in for the copper atoms. And that substitution gives unique properties to bronze that copper and tin do not have individually. The other type of alloy is interstitial alloys. In interstitial alloys, small atoms of a different element are placed in between uh, the metal of the crystal matrix um, which gives rise to a stronger uh, su substance. So for instance, steel. Steel is primarily iron, but copper is placed into the iron matrix. Not copper, carbon, sorry. Carbon is placed into the iron matrix. And those carbon atoms are smaller than the iron atoms, so they fit in between the, carbon, uh, the, the iron atoms. The, this allows for the iron atoms to be um, move much less easily and gives makes the material much harder. So interstitial alloys, again, are, give rise to a uh, much more stable uh, crystal structure and making a much harder material. You can also have a substitutional and interstitial alloy combination, uh, such as stainless steel. With stainless steel, some of the iron atoms are substituted with chromium atoms and carbon atoms are placed in between um, the structure, which gives rise to uh, the less corrosion that iron has, and then also the stronger material that carbon uh, creates by being in between the, the atoms of the, the iron and chromium atoms.
So these are two types of alloys that can exist. Hopefully that helps out with uh, what metals are, what metallic bonding is, and uh, the different types of alloys. Uh, good luck in your studies, and if you have any questions, let me know.